Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Sophia and I'm a second year medical student at Deakin University in Australia and today I decided to dedicate this video to OSCE practice and clinical passports as they've been called at Deakin University. So watch this video if you're also going to be studying for OSCE or you don't know what OSCE is and you are curious, I'm going to be talking to you what OSCE is, what it involves, of what are the hurdles in my medical school and how am I going to prepare for that. So if it's something you're interested in, stay tuned and I will cover all of that in detail. So yeah, first and foremost, what is OSCE? Well, OSCE stands for clinical examinations. The range of different specialities have OSCEs as their exams for the clinical skills that they have acquired. For example, nurses can have OSCEs, dentists can have OSCEs, and medical students like me will have OSCEs in the end of the year. So Deakin University, in which I currently study, they have OSCEs at the end of the second year. Why? Because first and second years of Deakin Medical School are preclinical years. So you are not yet in the hospital and before you go into the hospital in third and fourth year, you are going to have OSCEs, but just once a year in the end of second year. So currently I am very close to that time. Our OSCEs are going to be in September, October and November. So this video will cover what is actually included and how to prepare for them. However, there is one important update about OSCEs this year. This year, because of the whole coronavirus and everything that's going on in the world, in Australia, they have been renamed to clinical passports, which is basically you have to pass eight hurdle examinations, which are assessing your clinical skills. So for us, it will be the follows. So I'm literally reading from our assessment guide, which says the aim of clinical practice passport is to assess the essential clinical domains of performing a clinical interview, examination skills, interpretation of findings and results, and procedural skills. And they are associated with all the content we've been through for the past two years. So first we're going to have the history and examination task. Focus on written documentation and verbal presentation of the findings. It will involve an interview of the patient where we'll have to document the findings and submit the written documentation within an hour of interview. Then we will have to record a video of ourselves doing a brief summary of the case and the findings as if we were presenting them to the clinical tutor. And this will be done online. So it can be any, any kind of disease to present. So for example, the, the patient, uh, which is um, going to be an online actor, can present with different diseases from the range of topics we've covered through. Neurological problems, um, gastrointestinal problems, cardiac respiratory problem, or endocrine problem. So any of those four topics that we covered through and we also would be able to uh, give our DDXs to them. Second task will involve interpretation and reasoning task. It's an online written exam which will be during our exam week in November. The format of the exam is identical to other written exams and it will be via online system. The questions will be in the short answer format. This task will cover what we have learned in year one and two. Focus on common conditions and scenarios. For example, you will be given three clinical scenarios with several short answers to fill. And they will be designed so that they can assess how we interpret history and examination findings and investigation results. So this particular topic will focus on how we can find the clinical symptoms, the signs, and interpret them, and what investigations we want to run through as junior doctors. It will also contribute to 30% of the whole clinical passport. But as you can see, 
there's a lot of going on and before going into clinics next year they should be aware that we are fully ready to undertake clinical placements the third task is called examination task this task will assess the ability to perform two different clinical examinations so throughout the whole first and second year we had clinical skills classes we were learning how to do for example cardio respiratory examination how to do gastrointestinal examination how to do a productive examination how to do genital examination and so on so this specific examination task we will have to perform two examinations on the patient they will assess us while we are undertaking it and with a simulated patient or a peer. So it can be either a patient or a peer and the assessor will be examining the ability to conduct a structured and efficient examination, including demonstration uh, of effective, sensitive and respectful communication skills. So it's not only your examination skills, but it's also your communication skills with the patient, how comfortable you feel with the patient, and whether you get nervous or stressed or whatnot. This examination will contribute to, to the 10% and will combine a total of 20% of the clinical practice because there are two of them. Also note, you do have to pass eight of those clinical passports because they're hurdles. And if you don't pass, I'm pretty sure you will have to receive them. Finally, the fourth task, procedural task. The procedural task will assess the ability to demonstrate a procedural skill that we have been taught in the two previous years. For example, it can be a cannulation or a vena puncture, or it can be a suturing, you know? Any of those procedural skills will be assessed and this will contribute 10% to the total of clinical practice passports. So that was all about what's actually been asked of us in the end of this year. And now I'm going to be talking to you how to prepare, what books I'm going to be using, what study methods and which techniques in order not to fail OSCE or clinical passports. So how am I actually going to prepare for that? Well, there are three ways I'm going to prepare for my OSCE or clinical practice exam. First of all, is form study groups. Medicine is all about teamwork. No ever one doctor does it all on, on its own. It's usually the combined knowledge of each other. So what my best method of studying is to form study groups with your study buddies and gather up every week or to, to practice those clinical skills on each other. Due to lockdown right now, this is currently not possible, but I'm sure closer to the end, end of year it will be available and I'm strongly recommending you to do that. So far we have been doing the online history practice uh, via Zoom, which was organized by our university group. So that was very helpful. We basically jump on Zoom for an hour and one person, one student is a patient and another student is a doctor and then we switch and then we take a random history of that person. For example, yeah, I can present with shortness of breath and then the person has to ask everything else and do a full history with a summary. That makes sense. Secondly, there are great YouTube videos which help with examinations. I will link them below, but the first one is a YouTube channel Geeky Medics. They also have a website which I find amazing. They have a range of different examinations from cardiac to, you know, um, gender urinary. So you can find those videos easily. They are free, available on YouTube. What I'm going to do is I'm going to um, go through them and basically repeat and practice on my family members if I can't form study groups. But watching those videos maybe two to three times, trying to remember the correct order in which the examination is made and learn how to correctly do the summary because you also have to do the summary after uh, you've done your physical examination. The third thing that is very, very helpful is the textbooks, obviously, because textbooks have a huge 
um, list of OSCE findings and OSCE knowledge that medical students need to know. So one of those is called OSCE practice guide. I'm gonna link you it again. I think I already was linking it like in my previous videos, but this is a super helpful textbook. You can get it online or printed. I have ordered mine printed. It came pretty quick from UK, I think. So for me, it was a lifesaver because I can quickly open it up and you know, all my cardiac examination is there and I can just read through it. I don't need to watch the whole video. And for me, that was a lifesaver and I am going to be reading those more before the exams and trying to memorize them and make sure I use my stethoscope correctly. So basically this concludes uh, the whole video. The aim of this video was to tell you what is included in my OSCE or clinical practice this year and how I'm gonna prepare for that. Hope that was useful for you and make sure you subscribe and like this video and I will see you in the next video soon on my channel. Um, Hope you guys are having a good lockdown. Um, I definitely am. The weather is great. I try to get out of the house as soon as I can. But yeah.